Hello, astronomers. So here we are again, set up in uh, Dr. Matthew's studios, and I have here some, a bit of equipment that you have seen before, a lamp where I can adjust the temperature, making it hotter and hotter, making it cooler and cooler. Um, I have another piece of familiar equipment for you with this, a uh, diffraction grating. So this little piece of plastic that is set up to split light up into its many separate wavelengths. And so I'm going to be taping that on here. So I'll just go ahead and get this in place and uh, leave it in place. So we are seeing this effect that we, we've seen before of the diffraction grating splitting the light up into its several different wavelengths so that we see uh, the short wavelength, violet and blue light here, the green just sort of in the middle of the wavelength range that the human eye can see, all the way out to uh, you know the red that is the limits of human vision. I have a few other pieces of equipment out here today. So you'll notice this uh, cable that's sort of stretching across my table. That's actually a fiber optic cable. So the idea behind a fiber optic is that it's actually a super thin glass wire. So it's so thin that it's actually flexible. You can see that I'm, I'm bending it around here. And the idea is I have this pointed at our light source here. I'm going to be collecting light from the lamp running it through this fiber optic cable. And let me show you where that's going to be going. Yeah, that box that you see down there, the fiber optic cable is going into that box. Inside that box, there is a diffraction grating, like the one you've just seen, and a camera. And so the, uh, the light comes in, goes through the diffraction grating, and lands on the camera. So the camera is set up to then measure how bright each particular wavelength of light is coming in. Let me be sure I've got everything lined up correctly again. Okay, so there we go. This way we're seeing both the lamp and its spectrum. Now I'm going to, over here, I'm going to turn on my spectrometer. That's the name for this little gadget that is measuring the brightness of the light uh, of each particular wavelength that's coming in. So you'll be able to see the, both what you're seeing by eye here, seeing the spectrum split out using the diffraction grading for your eyes. So you're seeing the blue, the green, the yellow, the red. And on the spectrometer, you can see the measurement of how bright each of those wavelengths is. All right. So you'll see on the accompanying video of the, uh, the measurements from the spectrometer, this red line showing up below, showing up along the bottom. And you'll see there are a bunch of numbers. Those are listing out the wavelengths of light that it is making brightness measurements at. So at 400, right now, this thing is receiving no light. At 500, at 600, at 700, at 800, it's getting nothing. Now watch what happens as I turn up the temperature on my lamp. So as I start catching the light coming from that lamp, we're seeing the spectrum, the measurement of the spectrum, we're measuring larger and larger and larger values. Now, it can help us out. So here I'm going to make it just as hot as I can get it. Something that will help us out with interpreting what we're seeing there is a color guide. Because right now, all that we can see looking at that screen is that at 400 nanometers, there's hardly any light. At 500, there's more. At 600, there's a ton. And, you know, and there's some wavelength where it is brightest. And then the brightness starts dropping down again. So it gets brighter and brighter and brighter as we go from uh, short wavelengths, so violet and blue. It's getting brighter and brighter and brighter and then dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, off into the infrared. 
So let me put up that color guide here to help you interpret what uh, each, what each wavelength, what color each wavelength is representing. So I'm going to draw the visible spectrum on here, and we've got a color guide on here. Now that color guide is a little bit deceptive. So human vision runs from about 400 nanometers to about 700 nanometers. So 700 nanometers is this little tick mark that's halfway between 600 and 700. And so we can see that a whole lot of the light that is coming out of this lamp is actually coming out at a wavelength longer than what the human eye can see. So this 700 nanometers that you can see here, right, let's try to mark it with my fingers there, right, so this 700 nanometers that you can see here uh, at, the, at the edge of human vision, this lamp is producing a whole lot of light out here at longer wavelengths that our eyes can't see. We can see that here in violet, there's not much light coming out from this lamp. And then there's more and more and more. There's a whole lot of green. So out at 500 nanometers, there's a lot of green light. Then a whole lot more you know, yellow and orange. And then the brightest wavelength for this is actually uh, somewhere around, like, what would that be? Maybe 650 nanometers or so is uh, looking at the peak on our graph over there. Now, I'm going to take a snapshot on my screen. We've got, we've got our spectrum of the lamp when it, uh, when it is as hot as I can make it, right? So I cranked it up all the way. And now I'm going to turn down the temperature on the lamp. We can see the dropness brights, the, 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 dro the brightness, <laughs> the brightness drops very quickly as I turn down the temperature. Okay, so I'm gonna do make a few adjustments here to try to collect more light. So I'm gonna drop the temperature down to the point where we can clearly see it looking uh, reddish to the eye. And the blue we can see in our view with our diffraction grating that the blue light is pretty much all gone. We're only getting red and green. So I'm going to have it collect light for about 10 times longer so that we can actually <laughs> make a measurement. Um, and since I've got the table pretty much locked down, I'm going to go for an even longer time. There we go. So this way, by collecting light for a longer time, I'm able to detect a fainter signal. I'm able to collect as many photons as I was before um, so that I can get sort of a comparable signal to what I had before, um, even though the source itself is fainter. I'm going to go ahead and stop collecting light here so that we can make a, a comparison between what we're seeing here. So by eye, we've seen a change in color. When this lamp was at its highest temperature, it was glowing white hot. Now that I have it at a lower temperature, it clearly looks reddish. So to our eyes, there's a way to just glance and tell, make a comparison of the temperature. With a diffraction grating to split the light out, we can also see that now this cool lamp is missing blue light. There's just the barest hint of blue showing up here, but we're still seeing green and red showing up. And with our spectrometer view, we, see, we can see that huge difference. The, the blue and the violet basically dropped to, to basically nothing coming out from this. The green got a whole lot fainter. The, the yellow and orange got a whole lot fainter, but the red is still kind of bright. Now, a feature that I want to call your attention to here there's something I want to call your attention to in comparing the spectrometer view of the continuous emission from this lamp. Uh, there's a few things, actually, I want to call your attention to. Notice that in both cases, there's a big dip in brightness uh, somewhere around 750 nanometers. That big dip in brightness is not being caused by the piece of metal that is glowing here in the middle. That piece of metal here, in the, here inside the lamp 
is making light at 750 nanometers, but that light is not escaping the bulb. The glass in the way is absorbing that 750 nanometer light. And because there's, there's a lot of light being made out at that wavelength and the glass is absorbing so much of it, that's why the glass gets really hot. I've been touching it with my fingernail because it is too hot for me to touch with my finger. So the glass is getting hot because while it is letting the other wavelengths of light pass through, right, the wavelengths of light that we care about, it's letting those out. The blue, the green, the yellow, the red, we care about those, those wavelengths of light. We want those wavelengths to leave the lamp and illuminate the room around us. But we don't care about the 750 nanometer light because we can't see it anyway. So the glass ends up absorbing that and heating up. So that's, so that's a, a blemish. That's a problem with these observations that we need to sort of think our way around. Because if we can look past that dip in brightness that's being caused by the glass, then we will see a shape to the spectrum. Going from blue to red, we see, oh, let's see if I can, so we see it gets, as, as we go from blue to green to red, we're, we're, we're getting brighter and brighter and brighter and then dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. This pattern that a dense object is glowing a continuous spectrum, each wavelength smoothly varying into the next, getting brighter and brighter and brighter, dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. This pattern is universal. This is a, one of the fundamental patterns of the universe. And the peak of that curve, if you look at your graph and you find, where is it glowing brightest? You circle that spot and then you drop straight down and you read off that wavelength. If that wavelength is a large number, so if it is peaking at a long wavelength, your object has a low temperature. So a long wavelength peak for a continuous spectrum tells you that you are looking at an object with a low temperature. If that peak, like when I had this at its highest temperature, if that peak is at a short wavelength, so you find the peak, you circle it, you drop straight down, you read that number. If that number is a small number, then your object has a high temperature. So a short, so a peak that is at a short wavelength, that is a high temperature. If your peak is at a long wavelength, you have a low temperature. This fundamental pattern, really fundamental physics, this is how we can measure the temperatures of objects without ever visiting them with a thermometer. All we need is a telescope with a spectrometer to measure how bright the object is at a bunch of different wavelengths, and that lets us then find the wavelength that it is glowing brightest 